it's Dia. Today I'm going to do a color along. And it's going to be from a picture in Penelope's garden. And I know everybody doesn't have Penelope's garden. I had colored this one yesterday, the day before. And I put it on Instagram and people seem to like it. So they were also interested in this water droplet. So I figured I would give a a color along demo. So I'm going to color this one, which is also in the book, but I know not everybody has the book, like I said. So I'm going to draw a mushroom really quick. And all I did was use a, a regular mechanical pencil. You can use a regular pencil. You can use a pen because it is pretty easy. And mushrooms are fun and easy to draw. So the bottom line, almost straight. And then the top, is a half circle. Now you can see the lines are a little, I don't know, not quite squiggly, but they're definitely not perfect. So that's fine. I think it lends some realism to it. This is just a little shape with a little, almost like a skirt or a curtain on the bottom. And then right from there, you can add the stem. Once again, not perfect. Add a couple little dots here, a little pointillism. And then go from this corner, come in. From the other corner, come in. And then make the lines. Gives it a bit of an effect that you would see underneath a regular mushroom. You can go over this with a pen, or you can leave it as is to do it a bit grayscale. I'm going to make this mushroom reddish, and these dots will be white. I should have looked up the kind of mushroom this is. Okay, so that's it. Very basic. And for the sake of this color along, I am going to use the book. Okay. Right, so what I'm going to do is start with Faber Castell Cadmium Yellow. And I know I said I was going to draw it in um, red, but I like to do layers. Now there's a little bit of red here from another demo that I had done with an eraser, but I'm just going to go right over the top of that. Pardon my dog growling and barking in the background. I'm sure he sees the mailman or something. I should say she sees. You know what I forgot? Before we start to do this whole thing, Take your pencil and draw a teardrop shape and a circle if you want. You can copy the, the water droplet from the bottom because those will be colored differently from the rest. I'm using, it looks like a sharp point, but actually I've kind of worn down the side a little bit. I'm assuming the light's coming in from this direction, and that's why this yellow is going down first, because this will be the lightest and brightest part of the mushroom.
once again, I'm avoiding those droplet areas. Now this is going to be the most intensely bright area. So this is where I'm going to focus the most with the yellow. And then I am going to put some through the rest of it. But it doesn't have to be perfectly colored. The next color I'm going to color with is dark chrome yellow. Once again, I'm going to go over this little red area. I'm going to see how that incorporates into the picture. I'm not sure it's going to be perfect, but that's okay. Now this color is deeper. So I'm not going to color over this area as much. I want that yellow to shine through. And that's for now. Meaning I may go back and go over it again if it's too yellow, if it's too bright. If it's too bright, it could detract from the water droplets and then you won't be able to tell. Now just from these two simple layers, you can tell this is brighter. It's very subtle at this point, and this is getting a little bit darker. The edges will be darker because the sun's going to focus here. The next color I'm going to use is light cadmium red, although when I look at this, I see orange. Now, I'm going to leave a little bit of a lip around the edge just to make it a little bit stylized. Sorry, I think I was causing a shadow there. Oh, this is interesting. See right here, there's a line, a white line. It'll probably never be colored properly. That can happen if you use an eraser 
with a sharp edge. These mono zeros, I love them, but if you use them to erase something, you can see there's a metal tip, and if you push too hard, it leaves a line, so you have to be careful. Even if you use it in a picture above, meaning if this page was closed and you push too hard on the picture above, it kind of goes through. Not the end of the world, but just something to talk about. And it's a nice tip to know. Be careful of those mono zeros. I'm gonna make the edges over here a little bit darker because it makes it have the illusion of a curve if the edges are darker and it gets lighter toward the center. Now this area, once again, is going to remain lighter, so I'm going to avoid it a bit and not push as hard in the areas around it, because you don't want it to be a perfect circle in this picture. I mean, there are some instances where a beam of light does create a perfect shape on something, but not here. It's going to be softer, and it will blend in in a less discernible way. When something goes from a very light to a very dark shade in a picture or a drawing, it's called gyroscuro. And it basically means, I don't know if it's the literal translation, but it means light to dark. And that's kind of what we're doing here because the area at the bottom here will be darker. Try to get that area that I used for an eraser demo to blend in a little bit better. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the dark chrome yellow. And blend the edges a little bit more. I'm going to also go over some of this area because I did not color perfectly. And going over it with a lighter color will help to blend. I'm going to take this eraser and I'm going to remove some of the pencil lines because at this point we can see where the drop will be.
some dark cadmium yellow. I'm going over what I did. It's adding even more dimension. You don't have to worry about the white spots too much because you can always go over them with um, a gel pen or a white pencil to clean them up a bit. So you can see at this point that it has a really nice glowing effect. Where the sun's hitting. I'm going to take Scarlet Red, which is a very nice red, but it's lighter. It's, it's a lighter red. While this tip is really sharp, I'm going to go over the edges. I'm doing it in a scratchy motion. This doesn't have to be perfect because once again, it gives it a nice real effect. And I'm going to go over. I'm very close to the black line, but I'm also going a little bit underneath it. So it looks like there's a little bit of the mushroom edge showing through. Okay. Now with this color, since it's darker, I'm going to start to be a little more careful. There's a nice base of color here also. And it feels very different when you color on top of color with oil pencils. Doesn't build up a waxy surface that you can't color on. It builds up a surface that you can feel, but it almost makes it easier to color. You can go a little bit darker underneath these white spots now because each one of them would be elevated slightly so they would each cast a little tiny shadow. making sure I'm still centered. Yes, this right here is the edge of the book. But there's a white piece of paper underneath that I should remove that. There you go, so you can see the edge of the picture.
I'm still pushing relatively hard around here. Gonna get a little bit lighter around the drops. Although this side of the drops will be a little bit darker because there'll be a shadow through the drops from the sun. I'm going over the yellow very lightly because you would still have an indication that it's red. but it wouldn't be as intense as the areas that would be more in the shadow. And in this picture, I don't know if this would necessarily be in a shadow actually, but it would be less in the direct rays of the sun. Now this is blending in relatively nicely And I'm just going to leave it that way because nothing in nature is perfect or perfect looking. I should say everything in nature is perfect, but leaves rarely have perfect color. Bark of tree is many different colors and I'm sure mushrooms would have a great amount of variation also. So I'm just going to leave that the way it is. Okay, you can see the areas even more now where there's going to be water drops. And I'm going to go for an even more intense red permanent carmine. And once again, going over. Now with this color, I'm going to start to give some definition to the shape of the mushroom also. I'm defining the lip of the mushroom a little bit more here. So it looks like that's standing out a little bit more, meaning this lighter area. And then right around the edge here, I'm going to make it a little darker. So it looks like it's a little bit dipped in. I'm also going to take this pencil and I'm going to make a curved line. Since the mushroom is curving this way, I'm going to color in that direction. That gives the illusion that the mushroom has a more rounded shape. I'm going to do the same thing over here. On this side, it's the curve is in the other direction. Very subtle, but you can start to see it. You can bring some of those lines up, but you don't have to bring them all up. In fact, you don't want to bring them all up unless you want a striped mushroom. I'm going to make this one a little bit darker because maybe there's a little crack in the mushroom. And I'm going to blend the very bottom in. The pencil is very sharp, 
but I'm not using the very tip right now. I'm using the side. And when I draw the lines, I tip the pencil up a little bit versus flat, and it makes it sharper, meaning the lines sharper. If you want a more diffused line, hold the pencil flat. I'm going to bring some of this color through as I add even more dimension to the red. pressure is very light around here because I still want that yellow to shine through. Making the lines a little bit, not that they're lines, but I'm making the area underneath these leaves a little darker because the sun would be casting a shadow. Okay, so far so good. I'm gonna go back again with dark cadmium yellow and blend a bit. If I was to blend with white right now, it would change the intensity and make it much lighter, which is fine if that's what you're going for, but I want this mushroom to be very bright and glowing and almost look like it's catching the rays from a setting sun or a rising sun. Now I'm going to take middle cadmium red, which is off of the bright reds for now. This is going to add depth to the shadowy areas. And I do want to show you something. When I color with the pencil on the side, I hold it differently. I usually color like this, you know, like you hold a regular pencil. When I want to hold it sideways, it makes it easier for me to put this part of the pencil between my two fingers and then hold it with my thumb. It makes it easier to get a more flat area. You can see this time I'm going in this direction, a more horizontal direction. I'm adding some texture with the flat side of the pencil and I'm adding some depth. I'm 
that'll also add a few of those dark lines. And I'm going to add those dark lines even in this area that I left lighter. It makes it almost look like a crack. And I like that. I went over the white area a little bit there. It's okay, we can fix it. And then for the final color, and I might fuss around with it afterwards, um, before we do the water droplets, I'm gonna add magenta, which is almost purple. And I love to use this color with red for shadows. Again, I'm holding it in that alternate position. And you can see that it adds a really rich not quite brown, not quite shadowy, but very rich feel to the red on the bottom where there would be the least amount of sun. And a little shadow here. And it's subtle. You can tell it's a shadow, but it's not black. Something darker right around the edge. I'm going to go underneath this white spot because there would be a shadow there. And then go over the whole thing again with yellow to blend a bit. Okay, not perfect yet, but I'm going to take, let's see, I think that gray is too light. I'm going to take cold gray four, and I'm going to create shadows. Around these dots, well, spots areas you know in the spots on the bottom I'm gonna do it with black because that gray cold gray four isn't dark enough You know what? There's some lines here that I'm not loving. So I'm going to go over them and then go back to the cold gray. Now I'm going to use. warm gray here. I form a little shadow underneath. You know what? I don't think that's dark enough, but I'm going to continue on that side. And I'm also going to quickly, it doesn't have to be perfect here because I'm going to go over this many times, get a base right there. Now this is a Prismacolor pencil. And it's French gray, and I haven't really found a color like it. 
in the in the polychromos and I love it for natural colors it's funny enough what I would consider a perfect mushroom color making some shadows there now for under here I think I'm going to add some lines also I'm going to make them a little more squiggly a little less perfect I'm going to make a shadow with the cold ray again underneath this little skirt. If anybody is more familiar with botanicals than I am, I would love to know what this is called. I mean, I can look it up, but off the top of my head, I don't know what it is. I'm going to also add some lines here. Mushrooms bruise very easily and they leave kind of a neutral a neutral line, neutral mark, I should say. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of a warm color here. I think it's got to be a little more yellow. Let's try the dark chrome yellow very lightly and then I'm going to use a very light gray again and go right over the top of the lines we just drew and then black as a shadow use a regular pencil for these for these water drops for a demo and then go over the top with pencil on this edge there will be a shadow on the inside of the edge And graphite, if you don't push too hard, is a wonderful shadow color. Now, as you get closer to the center, the shadow gets lighter. Go about halfway around the bottom also. You can do the same thing on the water drop on top. So the outer edge of the inside of this line is the darkest. Meaning the darkest area is the closest to the edge. Then on the outside, it's gonna be another line, but, but the shadow will be on this side. Again, the darkest part is the closest part to the edge. And then it gets lighter, the shadow gets lighter as it, as it falls away. taking chrome yellow and going over the top of this once 
once again. Lighter as it comes toward the center. And I'm going to build some layers here. Okay, first chrome. And then dark chrome yellow. Light cadmium red. And all I'm doing is keeping the dark closest to the edge. And I'm using the same colors as I did in layers in the mushroom. back to the chrome yellow and blend a bit and this time we can go over the entire drop now I like to take black with a very sharp point over the edge and be careful don't push too hard but that edge will be the darkest right there on that side and you're also going to go on this side And the shadow is going to be on the outside. So once again, a whole bunch of layers and shadows. Now for the highlight, I like to do the highlight right in the center. With a gel pen. And this one can have a longer highlight because it's a drop. You can go over the areas that you may have gone over with the pencils. I'm 
also going to take the shadow out a little bit more. I mean, make it a little bit longer. Put even a more dramatic effect. I'm taking the magenta again, and now I'm just fussing around. You can go over the whole thing again with yellow. And to finish it off, I would be careful around these white spots. You can make a little bit of yellow in here so it looks very bright, like the sun hit it. And that last little bit of yellow makes the drops look like they're really 3D, and I love that. You can also take the yellow and blend the shadows on the outside too. Now, being the artists that we are, we know that it almost feels like a picture is never done. So I could fuss with this until tomorrow afternoon and talk to you guys while you're making dinner and, and never really finish. But for all intents and purposes, you get the idea. Okay, I met my goal. I was trying to do this in under an hour. You can also add some little areas in these white spots, little shadows because they almost look like, in, in the real world, they're not flat. They almost look like little Rice Krispies. So you can add little shadows, or you can leave them if you like them that way. That's the nice thing about art. It's your thing. Looking at this, I could probably blend this a little better. And make a more perfect shadow. Thank you for joining me. That one was a long one. Okay, so I used Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils. I will put all the pencils I used in the box below. Um, I also used a Signo gel pen and a regular lead mechanical pencil with a really, really thin point. 
uh, 0.3. Actually, this is a graph gear by Pentel, and that's it. Um, so thank you for sticking with me the whole time. Uh, I'll be doing another video on um, coloring and shading very soon. This time, though, I'll probably do a mushroom in pastel pencils. So once again, thank you. I hope you like the video. I hope you subscribe below. Um, and please follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and I will see you soon. See you later. Bye.